Well, it seemed that Cowboy Joe went to church and was telling his fellow cowboys back on the ranch about his first visit to a big city church. Unity at Gaithersburg, of course. (laughs) When I got there, they had me park my old truck in the corral, Joe began. You mean the parking lot, interrupted Charlie, a worldlier fellow. Well, I walked up the trail to the door, Joe continued. You mean the sidewalk to the door, Charlie corrected him. Well, inside the door, I was met by this dude, Joe went on. Um, That would be the usher, Charlie explained. Joe said, well, the usher led me down the chute. (laughs) Uh, You mean the aisle, Charlie said. Ah, yes, then he led me to a stall and told me to sit there. So continued, Charlie retorted, pew. Yeah, recalled Joe, that's what that pretty lady said when I sat down beside her. <clears throat> yeah, now, you told me you missed my jokes, and so I warned you. That's what you get. So good morning, and here we are. And I think you can tell there's a theme. Ah, there it is. And I just want to give Keisha, let's give Keisha some love. This is our new visual. This is our new theme for 2016, and I just said, Keisha, do your magic and create a visual image that we'll have on our slides each week. So here it is, and I'm just so grateful. So, and how this theme came about was through discernment, through, you know, asking the board their thoughts, asking the staff, hearing feedback from the congregation, and, and of course, the staff and the board are, you know, close to the pulse of the community. And so, and also <clears throat> from the interviews that we had for the new board members that every single new prospective board member that was interviewed um, brought forth this whole idea of community. Let's really just deepen our experience and our awareness of who we are as a community. So, okay. So I just want to share... Um, just my thoughts about this new theme and just really call us into just a deeper embodiment of it, an expression of it. So, you. So, let's, I know, let's do it. Come on. You, yeah. You. That you are the you in unity. That... Come, unity, come, and let's be in unity. Not that we aren't already. We already are in unity because we are one. But it just felt right to just draw attention to the word unity because of you, each one of you. Each one of you is a thread in the tapestry called Unity of Gaithersburg that brings its own color and own essence, and own beauty. And I just really love that image because I really feel like, and that that tapestry just keeps, keeps growing, keeps being created. And so unity is this umbrella that we teach from. You know, there are many systems of truth, and unity is what we teach from that's grounded in universal spiritual truths. And if you were here for the Fifth Agreement, we taught from the Toltec wisdom, which was very much in alignment with unity teachings because it's also grounded in in universal spiritual principles. So just to also bring to this community that we are unity and we teach unity. We teach universal spiritual principles. And again, because we are, I I love that we're part of a movement that is that indicates oneness unity and i just can't help but think that that really inspired the fillmores when they named it you knew they were going to name it christian science 
And Mary Baker Aiden was not happy about that. It's a really good thing, because then we got unity. So community. Can you do it again? It's just awesome. Unity. <clears throat> All right. So we are one. We are one love, one life, one community. The I am that we are, the unity. You know, the, the I am nature, the divinity that we are, is what has us be one. That is our oneness. You know, and Jesus is quoted as saying, whenever two or more are gathered in my name, and remember, name is nature, in my name, in my nature, there I am in the midst of you. There I am. The I am is in the midst of us. It is what we are. All right, so community. So how will we know when we're deepening our awareness and our experience of community? Well, we have four pillars, connecting, loving, serving, and growing. Connecting. So part of being community is having that sense of belonging, isn't it? You know, when you walk in somewhere and you just feel like, I'm home. I don't know how many of you have had that experience, but I know that when I walked into Unity of Washington, D.C. in 1996, and I had the greeter, who was about this tall, pull me to her chest and say, Hello, baby. You're home. I cried through the whole service because I knew I belonged. There was a sense of connection, of heart. And folks, that I know is my vision, that as we, as we set an intention in 2016 to really deepen our awareness of an experience of community, that each of you and every single person that walks through that door, whether it's during the week to ask a question about something or to come to a class or to come here on Sunday morning, that they instantly feel that connection. They instantly feel that they belong. Because there's something about walking in a space that regardless of how you're feeling, if you're feeling happy, if you're feeling sad, if you're feeling lonely, if you're feeling less than whole, that you will be loved no matter what. And you will never walk in these doors and be held as anything less than beautiful and whole. Anything less than period is not a possibility in this place. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. And also connection to this campus into this space that shows up like if you see a piece of trash on the ground, that you pick it up, or that if you see something that needs to be done, you're like, how can I help, or you just do it? Because that's what you do in your home, right? Yeah, so, so part, a big piece of the connecting is that I see us, each of us, myself included, claiming this community like I've never claimed it before. It's mine. And I mean that from it's mine. Yeah, it's my place. It's our place, folks. So connecting and then loving. So as we connect, I think we feel more of a sense of love. You know, each of us, in our essence is divine love. And there's nothing more beautiful than being held that way. I know that sometimes, though, maybe we might, no, no, don't, you know, uh-oh. Because when you walk in these doors, you are going to be held, again, as the divine love that you are. Love. That when you walk in these doors as part of community, that you know that you are lovable and that you are capable of giving love. That is a huge part of our unfolding, folks, to know the truth of what we are 
as love. And as we love, can we help but serve? See, I think out of the love of our hearts, when we are filled to overflowing, can we help but give? I really truly believe that it's our nature to give. That if we don't give, that there's something out of integrity. There's an out of integrityness, if that's even a word, when we're not giving because it's our nature. And I know that is why Elizabeth Gensler stands up here in all of her exuberance and joy about 4T because she got it. The light bulb came on about how transformational it is, folks, to serve. To move beyond ourselves. And there's a beautiful quote that I found from Cesar Chavez, who was a civil rights and labor activist that said this. We cannot seek achievement for ourselves and forget about progress and prosperity for our community. Our ambitions must be broad enough to include the aspirations and needs of others for their sakes and for our own. Because see, in this place called community, what impacts one impacts all. That when we give to one, we give to all. And yes, our, your financial gifts are such a blessing, and I thank you for that. And also your gift of service. Sharing your talents and your gifts. And if there's not a place that's already been created that you feel that you can do that fully, come talk to me or a board member or a staff member. We'd love to create the space for you to express your passion. And so you see how each of these build on each other as we connect and we feel connecting, we are loving, we are serving, and we are growing. Folks, as we participate fully in community from that place of, and that knowing of connection and love and service, wow, we grow. Lao Tzu, I found some pretty fun quotes. Lao Tzu said this, the key to growth is the introduction of higher dimensions of consciousness into our awareness. That's the key to growth. And folks, this is the word that's coming to me, a hotbed of transformation. <laughs> because this is a place where as you participate actively, you can raise your consciousness into a fuller and deeper awareness of the truth of what you are. And folks, as you know that, there's no greater truth. Because as you know what you are, the possibilities are endless. And what greater joy does this community have to launch you into the world, into your greatness? How beautiful it is to be a part of spiritual community. And I'll just share with you and I might have told you this before, but it's just on my heart to say that when I left my last community, I thought I was so done with church ministry. I thought, well, I've, I, I've had that experience, and it was beautiful, and I loved it. And so I took six months off, and then I was called here. And I have to say, it was community that got me. You got me at community. Because I tell you, my life just wasn't the same without being a part of community, a part of like-mindedness. You know, I don't know what your relationship is with your birth family, but I love, I, and I love my birth family, and I've also kind of colored outside the dots <clears throat> of what I was taught in my birth family. And so I was looking on my spiritual journey for like-minded sojourners. People that could see me, could hear me, could call me on my stuff, and could also call, just call me into my greatness. And the term that I created for that is a family of heart. And I've created a beautiful family of heart. And I want you to know that you are part of that. 
And so what my vision is for this community is that from us connecting and loving and serving and growing is that we each hold each other and we hold this community as our family of heart. You say yes? yes. <sighs> and we share our joys together. That's fabulous. Okay, so I'm going to walk up to you in the fellowship. You're going to do what? <laughs> so this week and this year, I just invite you to really embrace this community as your family of heart and to step into whatever it is for you at the deepest level, connecting and loving and serving and growing. And I want you to notice the transformation in your life. And one more thing I'm going to invite you to do. Now, I heard about this on Facebook. And I want to apologize if anybody has asked me to be friends on Facebook, and I've said, no, it's not personal. The only reason I'm really on Facebook is to go like pictures of my goddaughter, okay? <laughs> However, I did see this really nifty invitation um, for the new year to get a jar. To get, have you seen that? To get a jar. And each week of 2016, put an experience in an empty jar that's been good. They call it good or positive. And on New Year's Eve, you pull out that jar and you review how magnificent your year's been. So I thought, let's have that for Unity of Gaithersburg. So this is your share your joy jar, okay? And it can be your joy, you know, your growing edge experience, um, what's brought you more peace, what's brought you more expansion. I don't know what I put down there, but uh, gratitude, love. And so there's going to be, it's going to be out all year long. And we're going to have notes. We have notes back at the back of the table in the back of the sanctuary. And just put a note in there when you feel moved. And next year, or no, excuse me, this year, at the end of the year, we're going we're gonna to read about our year. And you can sign your name or not. It's up to you. But we'd like to just share. Let's share our joys together. Let's share in community together. All right, well, let's affirm together right now. We are a connected, loving, serving, and growing community. We stand together and express our magnificence. And that is a big magnificence. Thank you. Okay.